Thank you for tuning in to BHTV. As always, we have a very special guest. And this person is very special to me because she has known me for such a while. And just to see her develop and grow into her brand and watching me grow and develop into mine, this is very special for me. So this is a touch by Tiffany, but I know her as Tiffany. Um, and we're just going to let her kind of, you know, tell us about herself, tell her what she's representing and what her 2017 is looking like. Oh, awesome. Well, I am Tiffany Scott. Um, the name of my brand is A Touch by Tiffany Scott. And um, I am a local hairstylist here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Also uh, a makeup artist. Um, it's been my dream for an extremely long time. Um, I've been beating faces and touching heads and She's doing all that for, quite, <laughs> for right. quite some time now. So, you know, I'm an inspired designer. So uh, I do have, you know, a little itch to be out there and design and make some clothes and you know trying to bring my whole brand together <laughs> so bhtv is about women entrepreneurship and empowerment so we always like to get a little background of who you are where you come from what made you get to the point of doing it for yourself versus doing it for someone else well my grandmother uh owned the salon in pittsburgh pennsylvania all of my life growing up okay. um when we were younger <laughs> going to uh <laughs> Pittsburgh, we would be in a shop with my grandmother. You know, she was old school because she was doing jerry curls oh. and hot press and you know, you right, you know, you know how it is growing up in a beauty salon. So um I just kind of always had that creative itch when I was younger. I always started doing my sister hair. I had her and so many crazy hairstyles. Yes, <laughs> she was my she, <laughs> she, she was my guinea pig, but I think for me. The creative part came when I was in high school. Um, I always got my hair done, but it always didn't, it wasn't what I wanted it to be. It was always nice. My hairstylist growing up, her name was Carolyn. Rest in peace, one of my closest people to me growing up, but she was my inspiration. But um, yeah, I just would get my hair done, she would do it nice, and I was always like, I want a little bit more. <laughs> and then, um, I don't know, I just started doing my hair and I started doing friends' hair and things like that. I got into makeup a little bit later. Uh, my inspiration for makeup was uh, the No Scrubs video okay. um, by TLC. I don't know if you remember, but they had like the rhinestones on the eyes. They had a red eyeshadow. Bowl. They were one of the first ones. Yeah, so like that was like an inspiration. And then Missy Elliott too, you know, she always had like different hairstyles, you know, the 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 don't move hairstyles and stuff like that. So those were the inspirations yeah. for me. So that kind of blossomed into who I became as a stylist and an artist. So having the pleasure to know you for a while, one thing I can say that I always have known or noticed is that you've always been in your own. It's never been a time in your life where you fit in. And so that, that's always a motivation, especially like young girls that's awkward or don't know. For me, not knowing myself or being comfortable, like it took me to be an adult to be comfortable and like stand out, be who you are, but you've always been that person. So how were you able to hone that at such a like high school, be who you are, always stand out. I mean, anytime we've seen you, you were, you were <laughs> Tiffany, that touched by Tiffany. So how, you know, how um, about that? That's something that develops. Um, I have a birthmark that I cover, and being young, you know, with a different, um, a difference about you, kind of teaches you how to have touch, you know, tough skin. So, you know, I was teased a lot about my birthmark and things like that. But the one thing my parents did is my parents always validated me. So my mom always told me I was beautiful, and regardless, my dad always told me, you know, don't worry about that. You know, people would get over it. And then one day I just was like, you know what? I'm gonna be a leader in my own. If you can't accept me for who I am, then I don't know what to do. But you know, I'm not, I'm not the average person. I don't look like everybody else. Um, once I found who I was, then I was comfortable. You know, so even now I'm comfortable. I, I used to be a little shy about my birthmark. Um, but I don't know what happened. I mean, one day, I think it was my daughter's father, he just was like, you know what, you're beautiful without it. I mean, you're beautiful with it. You don't need to make up the cover it. So that was a little bit of help, but I think for me, just being confident and wanting to be myself is what helped me stand out. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely one of a kind. She, one. when I see she's telling the truth, it is all love y'all. Um, and so just to kind of reiterate, like validation is important. 
and having people that support you. Would you agree? Just oh yeah, to having that that someone to just kind of remind you of who you are. Definitely, you always need people around you that's going to remind you your worth. You know, a lot of times, young girls, especially young minority girls, whether they're black or brown, um, we sometimes don't have that. That's true. But we get a mental picture of what we think beauty is. Right. So we try to chase after that, you know, being light skin, no offense, light skin, but <laughs> being light skin, <laughs> long hair, <laughs> snatched ways, yeah. big boots, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like society puts that in our head, like this is what you need to look like, right. you know? so. You know, telling our young girls that regardless of how you are, how your body is built, you know, you're beautiful. So it's important to have people around you that's going to uh, constantly remind you of that. Okay. Um, just to kind of switch gears. So being in the industry, mm -hmm. hair, beauty, makeup, and someone trying to enter into this field and, and become successful, what, what can you, what tips can you give them? How can you kind of give them some kind of guidance, yet some kind of, um, you know, awareness of how to be successful, because you've been in the game for a long time, like, well known, Yeah. I mean, you know. I would say you have to definitely surround yourself with people who are successful or people who are grinding okay. in the industry. Um, I've always known a lot of different people that did hair, makeup, and everything, and I've always kind of you know, gravitated towards that. Um, but when I was in hair school, it was so many different people that I networked with. And I um, ended up hooking up with a friend, excuse me, and her dad is a photographer. Okay. So that's how I got into photography and doing okay. makeup so and stuff. networking relationships. Yeah, so it's just like, just surrounding your pe yourself with people who's doing it. Okay. You know, it's just like being an entrepreneur. You can't say, oh, I want to own my own business, but all my friends work in the call center. Right. You know, you can't really, you know, it doesn't mix so with it. yourself in an environment. Yeah, you have to put yourself in an environment. Like, you have to go to fashion shows. You have to go to, like, um, exhibit shows. Like, anything that's out there. Like, I go to a lot of stuff in Chicago, just networking. networking. But you got to have that. You gotta have that hustler spirit about you, though, because if you don't get out there and if you're shy, you can't talk to people. You're not gonna make it. So yeah, you definitely gotta surround yourself with people who are doing what it is that you want to do in the industry, so you can learn from them and get you a mentor. I've had a couple different mentors, you know, growing up, and um, it's definitely helped me become the person I am as a stylist. Okay. Um, so. I what you again, just more like questions. Sorry, my wig is slipping. <laughs> you know you good. You know you good. This is what you do. This is what you do. Let me make sure it's right. Let me, oh, let me see that. It was wild enough to do that. This is why I love her. Real talk, 100%. This is Gertie, down. Um, but this is why she makes it, because she's authentic. Um, <laughs> to get back to it, what, what makes you stand out in this industry? Um, like how did you brand? Because especially in an industry like this, you have to be branded for someone, you know, especially in young caliber to be having the clientele that you have. How do you, or how did you brand yourself to I, be who you are? I can't remember what I was watching, to be real honest, but I was watching something on TV, and it's basically like you have to become your own walking, talking billboard. Okay. So when I started getting into makeup, and I was already good at you know doing hair and everything, I'm like, okay, if I want to be a makeup artist, I have to have people look at me and look at me to a point where they're like, oh my God, you look nice, like what's going on? So I just started, like a lot of my craft is self-taught. Okay. Like I just kept practicing, 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 and then I started to become good at it. I'm a good drawer, so I was already, you know, good with color and stuff like that. So I just started doing my makeup, bomb, doing it bold, wearing big hair, you know, stuff like that. So when I go out, people do. So you made yourself. I made myself, my brand, my billboard. People ask me, oh my God, who did your eyebrows? Ooh, I'm glad you asked. Ooh, here, go hard. Awesome. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people ask me about my lashes. Like, I wear a lot of bottom lashes with my top lashes a lot. <coughs> and people ask me about that. As soon as they ask that question, boom, you give them a card. Somebody asked me about my hair, is that a wig? Yep, boom, give them a card. Wow. So I made myself I like that. my billboard. So in that That's way, dope. you know, I'm responsible for the amount of clientele I can attract and stuff. You know? And that's, that's good in any, any industry. You have to represent what it is that you're trying to do. Um, but as we get to the end, we always ask, last two questions 
Um, what is your three top like value beliefs as an entrepreneur to be successful as you're going through? Three things you will tell the next entrepreneur. Consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to stay consistent with uh, branded, okay. marketing, um, networking, and reaching out. Mm -hmm. um, I would say you have to have strength. Okay. You have to have the strength to get up and and go get with go get with it with a little bit. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> go get what you need. <laughs> to do it though right. like you know I, I started working out mm -hmm. you know I had a lot of inspirations yes. and I love my that. Uh, I love inspirations that. for working out and that gives me the strength to be able to get up and say you know what I got 10 people on my books today mm -hmm. let me get up work out I got a nice day okay. you know you still need that strength to get up and go re look for buildings and look and see where your clientele is and things like that and then um, another thing I would say goals you have to set goals for yourself I wasn't a big goal setter like I'm like Right. But you know, I really set some goals, and when I started reaching my goals, I was like, you know what? I have to do more. Yeah, so I would definitely say you have to have a plan, but definitely be consistent, have the strength to do it, and set those goals. That's dope. That's dope. And as, as we always say, it, snap, snap, um, is when you think about becoming her, what does that mean to you? Who is your becoming her? Becoming her. Um, it means to me, I, I mean, I definitely want to be on a platform where I give other women inspiration. Um, I want to be that person where I'm 